In this video, I'm going to talk about Air Jordans, economics, and the Negro. Um, I remember the Air Jordan sneaker when it came out in 1984 or 1985. I was about 11 years old. And back in that time, it was only $50 for these sneakers. And I remember some kids had them, some kids didn't. It wasn't really a big deal. And I remember when they changed the price in 1988, because I was in high school at the time, to $100. And, every, and after they changed the price to $100, every African American, every Negro felt they had to covet these shoes. They felt they had to have them in order to be somebody. All of a sudden, it became self-esteem on your feet. But in 1984, 1985, when they had the original red and black Air Jordans, I'd say up to about 1987, nobody really cared. But when they changed the price and made it a high-priced item, every Negro had to have a pair of them. And then after this, in 1988, people started killing each other for them. I mean, at that, at before then, nobody cared. They were just another pair of shoes. They were just like Adidas shell tops. Because Adidas shell tops were basically the same price as the Air Jordan back in the day. It might have been a $10 difference, but nobody really cared. Um, but, but after that, after 1988, people started killing each other for Air Jordans. They started robbing people for Air Jordans. And it, it was crazy to me because I knew back then, even as a kid, because I did used to read a lot, um, that these shoes only cost $4 to make in a Chinese factory. But the Negro feels he has to kill over a pair of shoes because he wants to wear his self-esteem on his feet. Not knowing that the price, this is also based in Adam Smith's Wealth of Nations, is based on what you're willing to pay. And Negro was willing to pay $100 for a pair of shoes. And literally, this set the bar for the rest of, for these overpriced sneakers today. 25 years ago when Air Jordan came out and they were starting to get $100 for a pair of sneakers, they realized, hey, we can get these people to pay $100, we will get them to pay $100. And then when they started killing each other, it, it, it went crazy. And then I remember the response from Phil Knight, in about, CEO of Nike, in about 1989, 1990, and he said that he wasn't responsible. I was on 2020, I think. It's a long time ago, I still have to remember, but... I remember him saying that he wasn't responsible for these kids killing each other. And I also remember Michael Jordan saying that he wasn't responsible for these kids killing each other. And I really took that as a teenager back then. I said, that's a slap in the face. But sadly, the Negro over the last 20 years, 25 years, I'd say, has been killing each other for these sneakers and murdering each other and robbing each other. You've been fighting over shoes that only cost three dollars in Japan, not Japan, China to make. And they make 2,000 percent profit on African Americans. And it's sad. And you know, it's disturb and the most disturbing thing to me is over the course of this 25 years, I mean, people are still killing each other over these shoes. I mean, people haven't fought wars this long than, have, than people have been killing each other over these sneakers. I mean, this is insane to me. It's just utterly and completely insane. 25 years. I mean, when you, when you think about it, Vietnam War wasn't that long. Desert, Iraq War wasn't that long. Afghanistan wasn't that long. I mean, even the revolution to create the United States of America was not as long as people have been killing each other over Air Jordan sneakers. I mean... This, I mean, this is like, we're on, we're on the way to, historically, it's almost like the Crusades. And the Crusades went on for close to a century, and maybe even over a century. I have to go check my history book. Um, but 25 years, people have been fighting over these shoes and killing each other. And the, 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 the complete insanity that, 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 that's out here, just utter and utterly insane. People camping outside of stores late at night to buy a pair of shoes. But these same Negroes won't camp outside that same store late at night for a job application. I mean, that, that's illogical to me. You'll sit there, out camped out for a pair of $200 shoes, but you won't sit there and camp out for a job application. Nor, I mean, I wonder if people will camp outside of a black-owned business to buy black products. I mean, if black people did that, 
for black business, we'd actually have an economy. We'd actually have an infrastructure. If black people participated in group economics this way, we'd actually have money in our community. I mean, the way black people sit there and they'll, they'll camp outside of a store, they'll spend 100, not even $100 these days, because the, the Jordan sneakers now are $200. I mean, CEO of Nike sees that he can make all this money, he make a complete fool out of Negroes. And the Negro just sits there and goes, I just want sneakers, I want to be cool. It's like, the sneakers cost $4 in, in China to make, and you're, you're not seeing the big picture. And that's the saddest part about the Negro. He never sees the big picture. He never sees how the way he spends money is why he's poor, and it's the main reason why people don't respect him. I mean, I look at the whole Air Jordan situation, and it's clear why nobody respects black people. I mean, the Negro, black people themselves. Nobody respects black people because of the way we spend money. I mean, you're willing to spend $200 on a pair of shoes, but you won't spend money on things that are important, like computers. You won't spend money on books. And you won't spend money with black-owned businesses. You won't even spend money in your own community, but you're spending... I mean, you'll go out to these non-black stores. I mean, I've seen people... Here in the Bronx, it's, it's, it's just maddening, maddeningly insane to me. You go to a store where they check your bags, where they make you check your bags, and because they're afraid that you're going to steal from them, you'll go in the store, they'll treat you like crap, these salespeople will just roll their eyes at you, give you so much attitude, and you're, and you're spending your money with these people, and they're not trying to work for it, because they don't even have, they don't even care about you, then you're going to spend $200 with these people, and they tell you that you can't return anything because most of these stores, like the Dr. J's here and many of these other ones, they tell you you can't return anything within seven days or so. Or so. They, there's all sorts of crazy stipulations when you go to a inner city hood store um, run by these non-black people. Um, I don't know who runs them, Hispanics, Arabs. I don't know who runs the Gene Sneaker stores. But most of the Gene Sneaker stores, they treat you like crap. They make you check your bags. They charge you a whole bunch of money, and then they give you a hard time about using a credit card or a debit card. You have to have ID. Most times, oh, you have to have an ID because we don't know who you are. And that's, that's against the law in, certain, in most states. that You just usually have to accept the credit card. But here, in, when you go to a ghetto hood store, they make you have to have an ID card. They, make, they scrutinize your money. I mean, they'll hold your money up in the air to make sure it's not counterfeit. All these little scrutinies and affronts to you, but the Negro doesn't understand it. He takes the slaps in the face just so he can have these sneakers and just so that he can be somebody for his friends. And I find it is it's truly sad that, that African Americans never look at themselves. They never look at their communities. They never look at the state of, of how they're being treated just for these pair of these, these cheap sneakers that I remember way back in 1984, when I was 11 years old, nobody really cared about. But because they put a price tag on it, everybody sees it as valuable. I mean, everybody has to have it. I mean, and then they have to camp outside of stores. I mean, I find it sad that black people camp outside of a store for a sneaker, but won't camp outside of a store for a job application. And they won't camp outside of a store for a book, unless it's that simp Steve Harvey. And maybe in that case, I don't know. But it's just sad to me, 25 years, when you, when you think about it, over 25 years killing each other over a pair of sneakers. And black people, I say, we have to do better. We have to start valuing ourselves more than these cheap Chinese sneakers made and stop making a billionaire out of guys like Phil Knight and Michael Jordan who really don't care about you, who really don't want you to see bring, bring wealth to the black community. I mean... I see it all the time. It's just sad. I mean, people take their tax money and they buy four and five pairs of these shoes and they don't have a computer. They don't have any any tools for wealth building. They don't have any plans for building a business. They don't invest their money. And you, you, there's a, you can do much better with your money than wasting it on these shoes and wasting your time with these shoes. That's all I have to say. You can comment, rate, and subscribe.